What's going on everyone? This is Esteban Ramos and I am going to be showing you a glimpse of some of our work that we do. This is going to be some graphic design work that I show you on one of my projects that I am doing for a beauty pageant. So a lot of you guys know that I'm involved in the pageant world. Uh, I've personally uh, created and owned my own pageant for three years called Senorita Event. Uh, from there, I've been doing consultant work for other pageants that pretty much found me through there. Um, and they use me for my expertise as things such as uh, management marketing, uh, graphic design, photography, uh, videography as well with uh, my partner Jacob Garcia, um, and other consulting work uh, such as uh, strategy, marketing, growth, um, getting actual contestants uh, with my business partner uh, Mario Pacheco. But today uh, I'm just going to be showing you a flyer for a casting that we're putting together. And uh, as you can see, I have my desktop pretty organized, so I'll pull up a uh, pretty much start all from the photos, right? So everything starts from the photography. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up today uh, the photography from the shoot that we did with uh, Edith, which is a uh, very, very nice young lady. She is the current queen of uh, the Primera Mano pageant. And we have, I'll, I'm going to pull up the actual raw shots, okay? I'm going to pull everything up unedited. So I could kind of show you guys what we were working with here. Um, I'll pull up just half of them because we took a, a load of shots. But um, pull up about half. And uh, let's go ahead and jump to that right now. So that is the finished flyer. Okay. So as you guys can see, um, looks like there's a lot of work done on it. There was a lot of work done on it. But uh, it wasn't too bad. Once you have everything organized in Photoshop and you have all your action set up, um, you know, you can knock these out fairly quickly. Um, then it's just a matter of style and preference. So I will show you a couple different ones because I actually chose from a few different flyers and I'll let you guys be the judge of which ones you guys like. So that is the finished product and let's load up the originals. Okay. So we got just dropped it up top here as you can see my mouse scrolling and it's going to start loading right now. Uh, there goes the loading bar and they're going to start opening up in a, another program called Camera Raw. Okay. So Camera Raw Settings. So this is uh, the raw settings from the shoot here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what they're looking like. And uh, if I go to this right-hand side, and uh, if I click as, uh, let's see here, I'm going to click as camera raw defaults, it's going to show you pretty much everything that looked like straight off the camera. Okay, boom. That's how it looked when we shot it. Okay, so... This was, let me go down on the picture that we actually chose, okay? So, boom, that was the picture that we chose. And so you can see a big difference between that picture and this picture right here. How we got to that is pretty much all the work in the middle, okay? So uh, we have lights, we have all that. And uh, pretty much what we did here is we smoothed everything out. Uh, you know, we did, uh, I have my own actions that I use to work with the skin, to work with the colors, and that's one of the ones we went with. We went with this one as well, and that one was pretty much transformed a lot since you guys last seen it as well, and I will show you guys that one, but the overall shoot was good. As long as you can shoot good in camera uh, without you know getting too off colors, then you can go back in camera raw and really, really edit the details, and we clone those lights out. As you can see, like right here, there's lights you know that are showing up. From here, it obviously looks a lot purple, kind of blue tint. So I'm going to go ahead and just move the actual temperature to be a little bit warmer. Okay, So it warmed it up a little bit. The shadows are just way too high. Lower the shadows. Put up the exposure a little bit. Bring down the highlights. It's a little too contrasty for my taste. Now you can see it's a little too warm. So I'll go ahead and cool it out a little bit. Add a little bit of a uh, purple tint to it as well. Those effects will take change right now. Boom. Okay. So now we're getting closer. Um, the vibrance is okay. I'll leave the clarity down for now. Um, my white balance, black balance is decent. So this is just uh, one step in the process. Okay. I kind of like where the photo's at. It's a little too uh, too much shadow still for my taste. Um, I kind of like where her face is going, and I like where her face is at. But I want to get closer to the end product, okay? So um, I will go ahead and click Done. It'll save those settings. And uh, from here, pretty much what I did is I'm going to take you guys to the actual bare uh, 
bare, pretty much the bare bones of how I got to this section, okay, of how we got all the way to pretty much completing this flyer. So after I edited her up, and I will show you that right now how that looked, boom, okay, skin looks nice and uh, detailed. Yeah, I did some light work on the eyes. We didn't really want to do them too much. It kind of has a mysterious type of effect. Um, we weren't going for like extreme beauty. We were going more for a uh, almost an interesting uh, shot. As you can see on her right side of her face, there's a lot of contrast and darkness and brightness here. So it's kind of an edgy shot. Um, it's a little mysterious. We kind of wanted to paint that picture. Um, I know she likes things to be you know nice and beautiful, and she's definitely going to get photos that are um, edited to that capacity but for the flyer we wanted it to be a little mysterious to kind of get people uh, interested in what we got going on okay so that's uh, as you can see I moved it to the left side and I could pretty much move it where I want to right now because uh, you know we're still playing with things so it was right here in the middle I moved it to the left because uh, we want to use this area here on the right side to start beginning to input all of our text and graphics. Okay, so I'm going to start showing you what I did. So I did a basic, uh, just a pink block. Their colors that they use are like this pink and white. Um, so started with that, just to start getting a feel for it. Okay, we added a little bit of a like a white kind of haze over it. Um, let's see here. So then we moved it a little bit more to the left. Okay, and uh, then I created the silver ball. Boom. Okay, that's where I want to lay the text over. So creating that silver ball, people, you know, want to ask like how I did it, what I do to create things like that. Um, did I find that on the internet or whatnot? So pretty much um, this ball, this actual style right here that I got, um, it is a kit that I purchased uh, from a graphic design website. I can't remember which one it was, but if I do, I'll definitely drop the link in. Um, it didn't give me this color though. It's just like an actual, like a black pretty much ball, okay, and um, I'll show you how I got to that, so this is what it looked like, that's it, that's pretty much the kit right there, okay, what I did is I found this effect, um, excuse me, actually, it came with these textures, okay, so how do you get that to look like that, okay, and I'll show you guys, so what you do is, uh, whenever you have your object, okay, that you want to throw a texture over, you got to put your texture right over it, okay, just like I did. So I threw my texture right pretty much over it, okay, I didn't let any other, like I didn't put it right here, or I didn't put it right here. You got to cover the whole thing, okay. So I covered the whole thing up. Then with the top image, you right click and click Create Clipping Mask. Boom, just like that. It pretty much absorbed the color and the texture, okay. I did that one for this as well. So this one, as you can see, this was just another, it looked pretty much just like that black uh, ball that I had, um, but I threw that silver over it. So anything that you throw over it and you click create clipping mask, it will inherit the texture and color. So from there, I pretty much dragged it, boom, dropped it to this one. Now I got my nice shiny little uh, background, okay? So from here, uh, I started pretty much just messing with fonts, okay? Um, I started messing with like, you could be our, you could be our next, like what are we going to put for this one? You know, be the next queen, so and so. So I kept this one pretty simple here, but I wanted to do something different with the next. I wanted to make the next look a little different. Okay, so I used this one, uh, this next, it almost looks like the next top model type of font um, that I used on this one. And uh, I used a little outer glow that you could probably see. See, I just disabled it, and then I enabled it. You can see that glow. Okay, just so it could pop out a little bit from that uh, kind of crazy texture that we got in the background. Okay, so we did that. Looks like the uh, next top model with Tyra, uh, was Tyra Banks. Uh, looks like that type of effect. And then I uh, threw some lightness in there using my light brush, pretty much, and just kind of smacked it here and there. And uh, let's see here. So then I got ready to throw in their logo. Okay, so I did a ball, a little white ball in the background, so that uh, again it could separate from the texture of uh, the uh, our sparkling silver ball. Okay, and then boom, threw in the logo right there. Okay, 
got to get a nice PNG logo just to make sure that um, everything looks nice and and crisp if you zoom in it'll you know hold its weight so if you zoom in you can still see pretty good uh, detail well and same thing with uh, Edith if you zoom in you can still see pretty good detail on her as well all right so um, let's keep going here all right so as we go up um, this is one of my actions as well not to jump off topic but this is a uh, says skin smooth blessed that's just an action that I created myself um, if you click it, it pretty much it does all these um, changes here within Photoshop and then it gives me a brush that I could paint over skin that makes it um, look like you know real soft uh, glowing type effect and if you guys want access to that uh, feel free to just um, you know what I mean hit me up inbox me and uh, yeah and I'll send it over all right so as we keep going along here um, so these little slashes okay these little slashes they're pretty cool they're like they almost look like uh, like cat scratches, right? Like cheetah scratches or whatnot. But um, I use those sometimes to indent or uh, express uh, small details of things. So in this case, I wanted to use some bullet points, which is take the crown, take the scholarship, take the prizes, and live your dreams, which is uh, what they are offering, okay? Because there has to be an enticing offering for the pageant for people to want to be involved and uh, they have to come through on their end to deliver that so as you can see uh, it looks like a quick effect and how I got these to be all the same size is I pretty much just duplicated them so as long as you got one good one you hover over your uh, my mouse right here and I hold alt this is on a uh, Windows PC and then I drag it it'll duplicate it so that's pretty much what I did Okay, I just duplicated, duplicated, duplicated until I had four of those slashes. And if you want access to these slashes, just hit me up as well. I got it saved on a, a PNG. Okay, so from here, we wanted to talk about the big prize. So should we highlight the prize on here, right, somewhere on here, or should we make it its own section? So I decided to make it uh, its own section. Okay, so again, created another uh, little ball, right? And I pretty much just did that using the circle tool like this, and then pretty much filled it in um, with with that pink color, right? Boom, filled it in with that pink, and then from there I added the effect of an outer, uh, excuse me, an outer glow. Okay, and the way that I got the outer glow on there was uh, it's pretty simple. You just uh, double click any layer you have, and it'll give you that outer glow effect. So any layer that you have. There we go, we're right up here. It'll give you that outer glow. Okay, and to show you guys, if I double click that, boom, there it goes. Go down to outer glow. Okay, and then from here, you mess with it how you want it. See, as you can see on the left, that it's growing. Okay, and it'll give you that effect. All right, so let's keep going up here. So now I gotta fill it with text. So the way I got that text is I have this thing called Instagram promo. And it has like these cool, like little jumpy, bright, colorful um, fonts and numbers on here that I pretty much pulled from. Okay, so I pulled this one that win 10,000 in prizes. I actually wrote that in there. Um, and then I pretty much um, collapsed the layer so that everything uh, fitted all into one. And at the time, I was able to uh, edit these, but now it's already a full layer, so you can't see the edit that I did on them. But I pretty much just typed in uh, one ten thousand in prizes, dragged it from here to this file, and boom, there it goes right there. Okay. One ten thousand in prizes, and it looks pretty cool. It looks like a little graphic-y kind of a more modern type of font. Okay. So now I'm going to drop in the location of where to go to and how to find them. Okay, so this is all just, this is pretty much boring stuff right here. You just throw this in um, because obviously we that's the bulk of the information. Like how do they get there? They need to know how they get there. So we throw this in here. Um, a lot of people sometimes criticize them. They're small and they want that information out and bright. So this information is good to put in the actual caption on Facebook if you're doing an ad. Don't put it too big on the actual ad. The reason why we go small with all this stuff, we're not like things aren't taken over the entire screen is because Facebook prefers a 25% text ratio to image 
or less. Uh, what that means in layman's terms, basically, it means your image has to be 75% more than any text or else Facebook will not put that image uh, on a higher platform and get be and make it more visible than other images. So I'm not sure if you guys know that though, but you could read about that um, a little bit more in the terms and conditions on Facebook. If you're running any ads, any paid ads, always keep your text small as possible uh, because if you exceed 25%, like I said, they're going to rank your uh, your standing on Facebook less, which means your whatever you're posting is going to be less visible. Okay. So boom, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, then I started throwing some things on the side. So we got this white kind of canvas here to play with on the side. And so I decided to throw in uh, another little image of uh, Edith right here on the side. So it looks like kind of hazy. And we did that because we didn't want it to take away from the actual picture, which is um, the main bulk of the subject, which is Edith. And then the image is here. This is almost like an afterthought, this picture on the right-hand side. So I took my opacity. I lowered it down to like, I think I had it at 56, where you could just kind of see it just glowing in the distance. Um, and it gives it just a cool other effect. It almost looks like a, you know, like a magazine ad or like something you would see at like a, a Macy's or something at the mall, right? Like some, some of their marketing material. So boom, that was pretty much it. We threw it there. Now this, now that we have the foundation and everything's broken up uh, in Photoshop, from here, I started playing with other images that I edited. So we have that image that we edited, right, the one that you know of Adith, and then I threw this one on top because I really like how that one looked as well. So now I'm able to deliver two different flyers, right, but with the same amount of work, uh, but pretty much just throwing in another image sized up to fit my flyer, which is right here, okay? And then I threw in another one, which is another one of my favorite edits, which is this one right here. And this is another one from the shoot, just moved to a different location. So now we got pretty much three different flyers that you guys see that all look pretty decent. And I'm happy with the results. Um, running the ad and uh, sent over to, uh, to the magazine. So yeah, there you guys go. If you guys have any questions, feel free to inbox me. Uh, any questions on photography as well, because I know I didn't go really in depth on that subject of this was pretty much graphic design but um, hit me up if you guys have any questions on how I shot this as well and uh, you guys might be able to see right here you can see the tripod right which is kind of sticking out so just to erase that quick tool um, is to use this clone brush right here and what that's going to do is that clone brush is going to be pulling from the, any background that you have and I could just paint it so if I right click excuse me if I click alt and I hit that grass area right here, okay, where I'm scrolling. I could actually paint over, and it looks like the background. See that? Paint it over, and it'll paint on the background that I originally clicked Alt at. All right, it looks pretty good. If you guys got any questions, feel free to hit me up, and I uh, appreciate you guys checking it out. And yep, stay tuned for the next one because uh, I might do these more and more if people are interested. Alright, Stevan Ramos, and I uh, will see you guys soon. Take care.